Isaiah 6. Starting at verse 1. Let's read this together. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Now that's powerful. Okay. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried out to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King the Lord of hosts. Let me tell you something. When you see the King, Lord of hosts, you'll realize how filthy we really are because of his pureness and holiness. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And, and he said, Go, and tell this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. Wow. Because they were rebellious. They were rebellious. And one of the things that was happening with Isaiah is the Lord brought him in the spirit to the throne room of God. He saw the living creatures. He saw the seraphim. He saw the things that were happening at the throne room of God. He couldn't even speak standing in the presence of God because he is so holy and so pure. And then the angel came over and cleansed him so that he could speak. But the Lord was looking at man. And one of the things he was saying is, who will see things through for me? Who will see things through for me? And one of the things that God wants His children to do is see things through. Amen. Seeing things through. Amen? And that's what we're going to talk about, seeing it through. Because you and I must learn how to see it through and understand consequences. Now, things can happen when we don't see things through. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? Praise be to God. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. 9, 10, and 11. Would you read it with me? Oh, hallelujah. And we can go 12 too. <laughs> but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. you got to understand, he says, I has not seen. I has not seen. Now, what is he talking about? That it goes into the heart of man. The heart of man is a representation of the man's character of his spirit. So the heart and spirit are one. But it's his character of his spirit is what his heart is a representation of. He says that these things need to enter into his heart so that he can see. Does everybody understand that? So that we can see things through. Now look it. He says, but what? Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. 
So without being in the Spirit, you will not see things through. And you can be in the Spirit and still refuse to see things through. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So it's our responsibility to get deep into the Spirit so that we can see things through. Does so everybody understand? Now go to verse 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the what? World. Now who's the Spirit of the world? Satan. Right. And what does it say? He's the ruler, isn't he? And does he not blind everyone? Right? Okay. But we've not received that Spirit, right? But we have... But the Spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So it says that we might know the things. In other words, you and I have a choice to get into the Spirit and stay there and begin to see the things of God. But there's certain things that we must do. We must see things through. Not just get caught up in present circumstances. In other words, you know, yes, we are with the God of now, aren't we? But the God of now, there's no space and time, is there? So no matter what you're doing, whatever decision, whatever whatever it may be, you must see things through. Because there is something that's going to happen at the end if you'll see things through. And you'll even know whether it's of God or not. There's a lot of people who say, well, yeah, the Lord told me to do this. But you know what? They don't see it through. And they'll find out that it really wasn't God. Amen? Eye is not seen, only in spirit. In other words, okay, why then do people fall behind in debt, circumstances, sin, backsliding, bondage, all of these things? Why? Because they don't see things through to the other side. Because they don't lo they lose sight that there's a cause and effect to everything. Even certain things people re don't, don't realize until afterwards. People, somebody can go out and buy a piece of some music, right? They can go out and buy some music, and they can say, well, it's, it's, uh, they, they hear a couple songs off of them, and they don't get really listen to the whole thing, and they find out that the music really isn't right. And what happens is they hold on to it because they paid for it instead of getting rid of it. And the music is keeping them in the outer courts instead of bringing them in the holy of holies. So we got to make choices, don't we? When every choice that you and I make, we must see it through. If you don't see it through, you'll always end up in bondage. Amen. Buying a car, buying a house, in relationships, a jobs. Every decision that you and I make, we must see it through. What is the end result going to be? Even when you say something to somebody, what is the end result going to be? There's too much blabbing of the mouth and not enough seeing things through. There's too much a doing of something and not seeing it through. There's too much of making commitments and not seeing things through. Amen. Amen? You now, there are people who take a job and work six days a week and are not seeing things through that they're actually backsliding and don't even know it. Because they're not giving their time to God. You can't give time to God by working six days a week and just going to ministry. You must take your own time to God. You will eventually bite the bait. Does everybody understand? You'll eventually bite the bait. Because you're not sowing enough time to God. There are people that are so committed to so many other things and they're not seeing things through. Decisions that they've made. Not seeing it through. And then they wonder why God isn't using them. Or holding them back. Because he can't trust someone that can't see it through. He can't trust someone that's leaning on everything else but him. Even though they make confession that they're leaning on him, but they're not. They're still leaning on them. Or they would give up some of these things. Ezekiel 12. You know, sometimes there, there's people that will go out and buy a car because that's the car they want. Amen. Amen? 
but they don't see it through. <laughs> they're not seeing it through because they're really not checking the car out, are they? Now, don't get me wrong. When God says buy the car, depending where you are with God, you'll know and you won't even have to check it out. But the Lord says test all things, doesn't he? Amen. He says test all things. Same thing with relationships. People get married without seeing it through. Amen. Then they wonder why they have turmoil and whatever. They're not seeing it through. You know why? Because they want what's want right now and they're not allowing God to show them because only in the Spirit. See, when you want, it moves you out. That's why the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I will not what? Want. See, when we remove him from shepherd, that means you and I want, and what happens is you can't see it through because you're not in the spirit. The only thing you're concerned about is what's happening for your pleasure right now. Amen. 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 And then people are only concerned about, well, I got bills to pay, I got this to do, I got, you know what, two eyes, you're out. <laughs> two eyes and you're out. It ain't three eyes, it's two eyes. <laughs> two eyes, because you only got two eyes. Two eyes, you're out, you're blinded, it's it. You already bit the bait. It's just a matter of time. Next thing you'll find is all your appliances, cars, and everything will start getting beat up. You'll start losing certain things. Why? Because you're out of position. The devil's got access to you. Because the protection is lifting. Because he's not your number one no more. You are. Ezekiel 12. Number one. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house which has eyes to see, but does not see. Let me tell you, rebellion causes blindness, doesn't it? And ears to hear, but does not hear. If you can't see, you certainly can't hear. For they are a rebellious house. Now, aren't we known as the house? Therefore, son of man, prepare your belongings for captivity. Now, the Lord is telling Ezekiel to do something because they're not seen. They're not listening. They're not seeing. Somebody understand that? Watch this. This is cool. Therefore, son of man, prepare your belongings for captivity and go into captivity by day in their sight. You shall go from your place into captivity to another place in their sight. Now, he's telling them to do something always in the sight of his people. It may be that they will consider Though they are a rebellious house, what was he doing? He's trying to warn them because you ain't seen, you're going into captivity. By day you shall bring out your belongings into in their sight, as though going into captivity. And at evening you shall go in their sight, like those who go into captivity. Dig through the wall in their sight and carry out belongings out through it. Did you notice everything is in their sight? Because they weren't listening and they weren't seeing. In their sight you shall bear them on your shoulders and carry them out at twilight. You shall cover your face so that you cannot see the ground, for I have made you a sign to the house of Israel. So I did as I was commanded. I brought out my belongings by day, as though going into captivity. And at evening I dug through the wall with my hand. I brought them out at twilight, and I bore them on my shoulder in their sight. And in the morning the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, has not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said to you, What are you doing? So say to them, Thus says the Lord God, This burden concerns the prince of Jerusalem and all the house of Israel who are among them. Say, I am assigned to you, as I have done, so shall it be done to them. They shall be carried away into captivity. When you refuse to see something through, you are get going right into bondage. Amen. Every time. Whatever decision, whatever you make a choice, everything that you do is going to either lead to freedom, maintain freedom, or lead into bondage. So if you're not seeing something through, we've got... Everybody say, Lord... Lord, I'm going to see it through, see it through. From, this from this night forward in Jesus name we must begin to see things through amen that's why people get caught up in all these circumstances and whatever if we, if we don't see things through we get brought into bondage every time 
Acts 28, 24. Now Paul was speaking to the Jews and uh, he was trying to lead them to the Lord and tell them about the Christ. And In verse 24, and it said, And some were persuaded by the things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word, the Holy Spirit rightly, spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers. And that's what we read a few minutes ago, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand. And seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have what? Grown dull. Dullness is a representation of lazy, compromise. The hearts have grown dull because they've gotten comfort in their own comfort zone. Zealousness has begun to decrease. The only thing that's beginning to increase is zealousness for worldliness. Their hearts have grown dull. Why? Because they're going, I want, I want, I want other things of the world. Then they find out because they didn't see it through that they have to end up giving them up. Yeah. Because they can't maintain them. Because it wasn't God. But they could have sworn it was God because they got a goosebump. They had a vision. They did this. Oh, it's God. I know it's God. Well, nobody saw it through. Because if it was God, he'd have maintained it. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, dull towards the things of the Spirit. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their e eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should, what? Heal them. Heal them. Heal them. Hmm. Can't see, huh? We must see things through. Now, you got to understand something that he was talking to the Jews because it had already been given to them. They already knew about all the things that had already been written in the, in the Torah. All of these things are what he was already talking about. But they wouldn't believe him. Even though that it was there written for them, they still refused to see. Does everybody understand that? They still refused to see. How many times has somebody gone up to, and said something to someone and they still refuse to see? I get a lot of people go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, they go, and I know that they didn't get one word was said. Amen. They're just giving me eye service. Yeah, yeah. And they go, Poof. And they blame everybody else for what they're going through. Romans 3. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to see it through from this night forward. Hallelujah. You know, there was a powerful uh, flick that my wife, I was uh, touched by an angel. My, we, we copied it. And, and it was about this woman who was the demon. And everything she walked by, computers and everything, would mess up. I mean, they were constantly messing up. Everything was being destroyed because the hedge of protection was lifted. Romans 3, chap uh, chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understand. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of abs is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness? Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. You know, what? sometimes we take God as just because we hear so much about he's our friend and whatever, but we lose sight in how truly holy he is. Amen. How truly holy he is. And so what happens is we don't see things through because we take God nonchalantly. Because there is no reverence the way there should be towards him. Amen. See, if there was that reverence towards him all the time, we would begin to see things through. 
a lot more than what we do. Amen? Hallelujah. Would you turn to John 14? Oh, hallelujah. Just a simple, quick teaching tonight, brothers and sisters. John 14. I'm going to see things through. Hallelujah. In John 14 and verse 6, John 14 and verse 6. And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on you know him and have seen him. I'd say that's pretty plain, isn't it? If you would have if you know me, you know the Father. Amen. If you see me, you see the Father. Amen. Right? Amen. Now look what Philip does. He says, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Hello. He needed to have the soul slapped out of him. He needed to have the scales removed from his eyes. You know why? Because he chose not to see, even though it was right in front of him. It could be right in front of me and you. And sometimes we choose not to see. Amen. And Jesus said to them, Have I been with you so long? How many times has the Lord said to us, How many times are you going to learn this thing? <laughs> Have I been with you so long? Haven't you gone through this enough times? You know what? You know, so many times when we're getting ready to do something and make a decision, we see something, and if God's trying to tell us, and we just go, whoop, push it over to the side, thanks, Lord, and we go. And, it's, and he was trying to warn us, and we think it's his approval because we didn't see it through. We only got a glimpse of it, but we didn't look at it. You know why? Because deep within we knew that he was telling us not to, but we didn't want to accept it. And so we thought, well, Lord, your word says all things work to the good to those who love you. So I'll use that scripture when I get to the end of this, when it backfires. <laughs> See, we have to begin to get honest. If you can't be honest with yourself, you certainly can't be honest with God. Amen. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? I think there was a powerful rebuke. Amen. Have you not gone through this enough? Are you not willing to take care of your responsibility? Are you not willing to see things through? You wouldn't be in a circumstance if you saw things through. Amen. You would have to give up so many things Amen. because you can't maintain them. Because you didn't see it through. You know when people open a business and they're bound to it? Because they didn't see it through? Amen. Man, they're now serving the devil through the business. I mean, people get themselves in debt because now they got to serve the devil and they don't even realize. Let me tell you something. When money serves you, you're serving the devil. Amen. I mean, when you're serving money, Amen. you're serving the devil. But when money serves you, you're serving the Lord. There's a difference. Oh, my people of God, how many times you got to go through this? <laughs> Philip didn't see or understand. Understanding brings sight. Understanding brings sight. No understanding, you're blinded. Amen. Amen. Rebellion brings blindness. Hallelujah. And Luke 4. And Luke chapter 4. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Would you read it with me? Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Now look at those three. It says, to preach the gospel to the poor, right? And that means, believe me, it doesn't mean financially poor. It means poor in spirit. Okay. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, those who have a broken spirit. To proclaim liberty to the what? Captives, those who didn't see and got brought into captivity. And the recovery to the what? The blind. The blind, so that they could see and get out of captivity. Why? Because in liberty to those who are what? Let me tell you, when you get into captivity, you're oppressed. It seems like it's a hole that you can never get out of. It's an oppression that's hard to get out of. And you know why? Because we brought it on ourselves. We can't blame nobody else. We can't blame God. We, we can only blame ourselves. And do the right thing. See things through. See things through. You know, even when the Lord gives me something, does it, I pray, in other words, he'll, he'll give me something during prayer. And you know what? I'll get confirmation that day. And sometimes they'll say, Lord, I need double confirmation. And even when he gives me double confirmation, I'm still going to test it. I'm going to see it through because I'm asking the Holy Spirit to bring me to the place where I need to be to know that it's of him. And sometimes he's leading me to a place so that from there he can lead me somewhere else. I don't know what the whole end result is. He doesn't give us blueprints. But he'll give us bit by bit, won't he? It should be nice to have a whole blueprint, but we'd end up trying to alter it. But I have to, what he gives me, I have to accept when he gives me confirmation. You can't go out by assumption. That's how people get caught into captivity. You know why? Because they refuse to see something through. Assuming is an excuse of laziness. Assuming is an excuse for laziness. Well, you know, I just, the, the Lord gave me this and, you know, I trust that he's going to, and I'm going to just go do it. No, that's assuming. That's assuming. You better have confirmation and you must see it through. You must see things through or you'll end up in bondage. And, you know, the word tells us about the servant, right? That, what did he do with the talents? Amen. He was the one that got him what? taken all the way and given to somebody else. You know why? He didn't see it through, but the other ones did. Hallelujah. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So the anointing of the Holy Spirit brings us sight. But you can still have the Holy Spirit and be filled and choose not to see. You can sit there and pray in the Spirit all day long and choose not to see. Amen. You can go to 14 services in a day and still not see. Because God does not force us to see. <laughs> he allows us to see. Psalm 25. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. 
You know, how many times have you said something you wish, oh man, I wish I wouldn't have said that. Or you did something you said, oh man, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Or you bought something, oh, I wish I wouldn't have bought that. Or you got a job and you did this, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. You know why? Didn't see it through. You didn't allow the Holy Spirit to give you insight to see it through because it was a thing of want which blinded us. Everybody got it? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Insight, right? Everybody got it? Insight. That way you can see in. Amen. Everybody got it? Insight. That's what that word says, right? Insight. In sight. In the spirit sight. Amen. In the spirit sight. Psalm 25. In verse 12. Who is a man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity. And his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. He will show them his covenant. Show means you'll see it. My eyes are ever toward the what? Oh, hallelujah. In other words, he's laboring under the Lord no matter what he does. He's willing to see things through. For he shall pluck my feet out of the net. See, if you're allowing the Spirit to show you, give you insight, and you're following what the devil's traps are set for you, will not affect you. The Lord will pull you out of it every time. Amen. Do you understand? So people are looking at the traps of the devil instead of keeping their eyes on the Lord as they're going through a circumstance. And if the Holy Spirit, if you're getting that insight of the Holy Spirit, you're seeing already what God is having you to do. Amen. And as you're going through it, every snare of the devil, he'll snare himself. Amen. He can't touch you. Amen. The devil cannot touch the perfect will of God. Amen. He can't touch it. Amen. He cannot touch the perfect will of God. Amen. So when you're getting touched up, beat up, thrown down, cast out, all things are happening. You know why? You're out of the perfect will of God. It doesn't mean that we won't have trials and tribulations. It, don't, it doesn't mean that we won't be tested. But you'll see the devil snared in everything that he tries to do. Amen. And you'll walk. The hindrances will be there. The walls will be there. They'll be brought down. And you'll walk. And you won't decrease, you'll increase. Amen. God is not one who decreases. He increases. He told Adam and Eve, be fruitful and what? Multiply. He says, I've come to bring life and life more abundantly. Then why aren't enough believers walking in an abundant life? Amen. They're not seeing it through. Amen. <laughs> we should be seeing it through. We should be walking in an abundant life. Healthy, prosperous, in spirit, in truth, with knowledge, and in finances. Hallelujah. Uh, where are we? <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Psalm 25 still? Okay, that's cool. Let's go on. <laughs> so we need to keep our eyes towards the Lord, right? In Revelation 3. Oh, hallelujah. You know, we talked, we, we talk about three things that trigger people. Uh, especially if you've come out of a drug or alcohol circumstance. Or actually anything, even pornography or whatever, any addictive state. Three things that trigger people is people, places, and things. But if you're not seeing it through, you know how many people have, who've gotten freed up, cleaned up, whatever, and saw an old friend and decided to hang around with them for a while, and next thing you know, you know what? They didn't see it through because the Spirit was trying to warn them that they were going to fall. Amen. They would go to a place and they didn't see it through. 
they began to purchase certain things and they didn't see it through. The next thing you know, they can't afford those things, brought them in debt, they had to get rid of them because the Spirit was trying to show them what was what, but they wouldn't see it through because of a want. I want. In Revelation chapter 3, in verse 18, Jesus said to them, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Whoa. That you may see. You know, even the guys in our class at the jail and so forth, in our Total Freedom Drug Program, when they first start out and everything, everything's great. And they're able to see. And you know what? The Spirit is telling them, okay, I want you to go to the residence. And they're able to see. And they're able to hold on to that. And you know what happens? They end up coming here and getting freed up and doing and serving God according to whatever. But you know what happens? The devil likes to take that too. They begin to look at me, me, and me instead of what the Spirit had showed them already to Amen. see through. Amen. And they don't complete what God asked them to do from the beginning. Amen. And you know what happens? They lose everything all over again. Amen. Because when the Spirit shows you and you see through, that means He's asking you to complete what He already showed you. Amen. 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 So we need to have Isaiah. That's the anointing. Didn't Jesus put Isaiah on the, on the one guy that was blinded? You know what he did? He mixed it with mud and saliva. Yep. Jesus can spit on me all day long. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whatever he's going to touch is going to be made whole. <laughs> Praise God. Think about the woman with the issue of blood, and we hear that over and over and over. I mean, here was a woman that gave up everything to try and get the physical healing. Amen. She was out of money. She, I mean, she, Jesus was in town. <laughs> the evangelist was in town, you know. And uh, the Spirit was moving on her. She actually saw it through, didn't she? Yes. She, uh, she saw it through. And you know what? Even though physically she wasn't healed yet, Spiritually, she was. And what was going to happen is, that's all she needed to do was make contact. You know what she had to do? Complete what she saw. When she completed what she saw, she was made whole. Instantly. I mean, she had to beat through and touch the hem of a garment. And she knew. See, she saw it, that that's all she needed to do is touch him. And that she would be totally healed. Now, her circumstance caused her to go after him. She was out of money. She was dying. Nowhere to go. Probably lost her home and everything else. Street bound. It was over with. She was getting ready to die. Unfortunately, sometimes we have to get in those circumstances to look up. But we don't have to. If we'll see things through, we won't get into those circumstances. I mean, you know, we can all sit here and reflect on so many things that we didn't see things through. It brought us into bondage and how we lost this and how we lost that. You know, but we can't go to the back. We can't go to our past. But you know what we can do? Learn from it. Amen. Learn from it. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Kings, chapter 6. Now, don't let the devil beat you up. Amen? Jesus loves us. Don't let him beat you up. This isn't out for just one individual or two individuals. It's for me and for everyone. You know, one of the things that we teach here is truth. It's not about soulish ministry. It's about the ministry of the Spirit. 
because we want to get straightened up, not puffed up. Amen? Praise be to God. Second, Prince, uh, second uh, Kings chapter 6, and in verse something, in verse 9, Hallelujah. And the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Assyrians are coming down there. So the man of God, the prophet, saw something that he wanted to send message to the king of Israel not to go by this one place because the Assyrians were going to ambush him. In verse 10, then the king of Israel sent someone to the place of which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned him, and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servant and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? He was upset. He, every time he tried to snag the king of Israel, he couldn't because the, the Lord showed the man of God what to do. <laughs> and one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying, Surely he is in Donat, Dothan, Dothan, whatever. Verse 14. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. So remember, the Lord shows the man of God what's going on behind the bedroom, all right? Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> And verse 15, And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And the servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? Now the servant of Elijah, uh, Elijah was freaked out. He saw all of this army there. So Elijah said to him, he said, in verse 16, he said, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Now, his servant didn't see anybody with him, did he? In verse 17, Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. See, if we'll just see. You know, the Word tells us that one angel can slay 185,000 people. The Word tells us that we have a legion of angels on our behalf. You know, we lose sight that we're king's kids, offsprings of the anointed one and his anointing, heirs of Christ, seeds of Abraham, chosen and predestined to be conformed into his image and likeness. We lose sight. You know why? Because we get caught up in now of our circumstance. And we don't see things through. If we'll see things through, we'll see the other side. Amen. And we'll have victory. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay. Um, praise God. Let's, let's go on. Uh, let's go to Second Kings chapter 2. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter two. This one's for me and you. Everybody there? Amen. Are we getting it? Are we gonna use it? Hallelujah. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elijah from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me unto Bethel. 
But Elijah said, If the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bithel. Now, Elijah saw something through. He said, No way, Jose. You are not getting out of my sight because there's something I see that's not just temporary. There's something I see that's not just right here. I'm seeing something true here, and you're not getting out of my sight. I'm following you all the way. Now, the sons of the prophets who were at Bithel came out to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. In other words, he said, Shut up. <laughs> Don't you? Listen. You're going to always get opposition from seeing through. If you think the devil is just going to sit there and let you see through, he won't. He's going to op give you opposition. He does not want you to see through to the other side. Because why? That's where the trap is at. Isn't the greatest weapon of the devil deception? In verse 4, Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me under Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. He was still seeing through. He didn't know what lied ahead, but he was seeing through that there was something that the Spirit was showing him. And you know what? Sometimes the Spirit is showing you something, and you don't even understand it. But you know that you have to go. Amen. You know. But you're not going to get that if you're not fellowshipping in the Spirit. There, and it's not called assuming. It's called knowing. Because you're fellowshipping with the Spirit so you know His character now. And He doesn't have to explain every little thing to us. Does everybody understand that? He doesn't have to explain. In fact, he won't explain every little thing to me and you anymore after a period of time. Now he expects you to know his character. And when he unctions you to do whatever, you know that it's him. Hallelujah. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elijah and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Again. He wasn't going to let anything interfere with the Spirit had showed him because he saw through. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to, to the Jordan. But he said, You're crazy, man. I'm going with you. So he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. I will not leave you. I will not leave you. I will not lose focus. I will not be deterred from any way. I will not. Nothing is going to interfere with what I see. Nothing's going to interfere, right? Nothing. Now we got another inner, don't we? It's called inner what? Fear. <laughs> Hallelujah. But anyways, we want insight, don't we? We want to go all the way. Hallelujah. Then Elijah said to him, stay here. Okay, we did that. In verse 7, And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood at the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. They went to the other side. See, if Elijah had said, okay, I'll wait here, he would have never gone to the other side. Okay. Now, the Spirit brings him to the other side because he was getting ready to give him something. So it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elijah, ask what I may do for you. Before I am taken away from you, Elijah said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. See, when God gives you something and you complete it, He can trust you. Amen. And you know what? He says, Ask me now. 
You don't have to go ask him. He'll tell you, ask me. Why? Because he can trust you to complete what he gave you. People struggle to get things because they haven't completed the first thing God gave them. In verse 10, so he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, <laughs> if you what? See me. So he was still saying, okay, you still have to continue following this mission of sight. You still must not. If you see me, you can have it. But if you don't, you blow it. Because see, you made it to the other side. I've asked what you wanted. Now to complete this, you must complete the vision. You must complete the sight that I've given you to follow. You must see it through. So he said, you ask a hard thing, nevertheless, it will be granted to you. If you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. So he still needed to keep focused, didn't he? Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by the whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. In other words, he knew that the mission had been completed. So he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. And he also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and he said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that way. And Elijah crossed over. He went to another side. He had to go over two sides to get the double anointing. Why? He saw it through. There's a reward for seeing things through. And there's also a reward for not seeing them through. But it ain't a pleasant one. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He saw it through. First Samuel 17. Glory, hallelujah. Everybody all right? 1 Samuel 17. Glory to God. I'm going to see it through. I'm going to see it through. 1 Samuel 17 and verse 24. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David, brother David, who is out hanging out with the sheep. Uh, let's start at verse 21. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in the battle array, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers and he talked with them there with the champion what was the champion the philistine of gath goliath by name coming up from the armies of the philistines and he spoke according to the same words so david heard them and all the men of israel when they saw the man fled from him and were dreadfully afraid so the men of israel said and have you seen this man who has come up Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king, will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. Then David spoke to the man who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach of Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David was beginning to see something. And the people answered him in this manner, saying, 
who shall it be done for a man who kills him? Now, Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. There's more opposition. And he said, Why did you come here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and insolence of your heart, for you have come here to see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another and said, to the same, said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fall before him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. David saw something. And you know what? He was going to get opposition. But he was going to see it through. Hallelujah. Go to verse um, 33. And Saul says to David, David, you are now able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. So already here was the second opposition, wasn't it? His brother and then the king of Israel. Said, you're crazy, kid. Go to verse 37. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. <laughs> he said, Okay, go. In verse 41. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good-looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? Third opposition. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have the file. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I'll give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. He saw the completed product. And what happened? David ended up hitting him right between the eyes and took his head. <laughs> Why? Because he saw it true before he even did it. I, you come to me with javelin and spear. You come to me in the flesh. I come to you in the spirit. Do you understand? I come to you in the spirit. Why? Because I have insight. I see the complete. You know, the Lord looks at me and you as complete. He looks at Jesus on the cross. That's why you and I are here. He doesn't look at us. He looks at the completed, finished product of what Jesus paid for me and you. Oh, there was victory, wasn't there? <laughs> Go to Judges 16. Judges 16. Glory to God. Victory and seeing it through. Victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Judges 16. In verse 1. Now Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there and went into her. He obviously didn't see it through. It was a Nazarite. 
supposed to be holy and so forth and separated unto God. He didn't see it through. One of the first snares is the oppositional sex. <clears throat> when the uh, Gazites were told Samson had come here, they surrounded the place and lay wait for him all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet all night, saying in the morning, when it is daylight, we will kill him. And Samson lay low till midnight. Then he arose at midnight, took hold of the doors of the gate of the city, and the two gate posts pulled them up, bar and all, put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Afterward, it happened that the, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorak whose name was Deliah, Delilah, another one. David didn't, uh, Samson did not see through. Anyways, he went on and went on. And uh, Samson said, uh, De so Deliah, Delilah said to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound to afflict you because she was getting paid to find out. And uh, Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Now, he lie, he's lying to her, isn't he? Yeah. He ended up lying to her three times. You would think that Samson would get it, that the girl was trying to snare him. You know why? Because he wasn't seen through. He was only interested in satisfaction of now. He was called to be the deliverer of Israel. And you know what? Because he didn't fulfill what God asked him to do, Israel went into captivity. Three times. You think David or Samson would get it by now? Amen? Go to uh, verse uh, 13. Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me what you may know, what you may be bound with. And he said to her, If you weave seven locks of my head into the web of the loom, and so forth. So she did that too, and it didn't work. <laughs> and verse 16, And it came to pass when she persisted him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death. You think that he would get it by now. Do you understand? The girl was obviously trying to kill him for money. And he wouldn't see it because he was blinded. He wouldn't see it through, right? In verse 21. So he finally opened his heart to her and told her the whole thing, didn't he? He didn't see it through. Then the Philistines took him and what? Let me share something with you. When you don't see it through, your eyes will be put out. Why? You'll be blinded. Totally lost. Vision, sight, everything. And the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. Captivity and blinded. Hello? Hello? He didn't see it through. Second Samuel 11. Oh, hallelujah. Second Samuel 11. Is everybody all right? A few more scriptures and we're done. Hang tough. Second Samuel 11. Glory to God. Now we know David, who was a powerful man of God, was a king and so forth, right? Amen. Amen. Well, he blew it too. <laughs> Praise God. He didn't see something through, did he? But he learned by his mistakes. In verse 1, It happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings went out to battle. So they were supposed to go out to battle, weren't they? 
that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Oman and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. So he was supposed to be somewhere, and he wasn't. Amen. This ended up getting him in a snare of sin. He ended up hanging out. He became peeping David. <laughs> he went out on the roof. He saw some girl who was bathing out there. Another time, look at it. Another opposite sex causing the fall. And uh, he saw this woman bathing out there, and he called her and lied with her and whatever. And she got pregnant. Okay? Now, come to find out that she was the wife of his right-hand man. He ended up having his right-hand man killed. She ended up moving in with him. And then something happened. Glory to God. Now, go to verse chapter 12. In verse 1. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David and came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little woo, you, lamb, which he had bought and nourished, and it grew up together with him and his children. It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. And a traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare one for a wayfaring man who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die. And he shall restore fourfold for the lamb because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said, David, this be you. You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. In other words, it's over with. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to keep your wife, to be your wife, and they have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to your wife, to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will rise up adversity against you from your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor. And he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, before the sun. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, because of this deed, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The children also who is born to you shall surely die. Now understand this. What happened is because David didn't see this through. One of the things that happened is he brought a curse on his family line. He lost the child. His sword would never rest and he could not build the house of God because of the blood. Because he didn't see it through. Even though God forgave him, you still reap what you sow. Amen. All of us in here are still reaping what we've sowed in our life, even though God has forgiven us. But how much more reaping do you want to pick up? Amen. <laughs> That's up to us, isn't it? Praise God. In Matthew 7. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to see it through. In Matthew 7. In 
in verse 1. Judge not that you not be judged. Amen. For with the judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. Now, Jesus never said not to judge. You're supposed to judge. How else are you going to know what to do? Especially who you're going to hang around with. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but don't consider the plank in your own eye? That's someone that's not checking himself out. You know why? He's only looking at now and can't see things through. He's blinded. How can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye and then you will be able to see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Hello. So Jesus didn't say don't judge. He said first judge yourself. Because if you're trying to tell someone else what to do and you're still doing the same old things because you're not willing to see things through, you better shut your mouth. Because you're going to be judged for trying to correct somebody else. It will come to manifest. Amen? Yeah, but you don't understand. This this person, this and this, this person, that. Well, what about you? Well, I... Uh, well, that was different. No, you didn't see it through. And now because you didn't see it through by trying to correct someone else, you will be judged by God. Get sight. Ooh, Matthew 6. We'll back up a little bit. Two verses in Matthew 6, 22 and 23. Would you read it with me? The lamp of the body is the eye. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Let me share this with you. What you see is what you get. Amen. What you refuse to see will get you. You want this again? Yeah. What you see is what you get. What you refuse to see will get you. What you see is what you get. What you refuse to see will get you. Every one of us has fallen into that category because we wouldn't see something through. What we wanted now blinded us. Matthew 26. Matthew 26 and 36. And Jesus said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. See, Jesus was seen through. And he knew what was up. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not stay with me for one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, the second time he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, Father, oh, my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. And he came to his disciples and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hand of the sinners. Rise and let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. He went and prayed, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass me by, but not my will yours. Why? He saw through, didn't he? He was seeing it through because he knew what the reward was going to be. His children. His children. He had to go through it because there was a reward. Lost souls into the kingdom. Ephesians 6. 
You know, if Jesus didn't see it through, you and I wouldn't be here. <laughs> we wouldn't be filled with the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 6, verse 5 through 9. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and sincerity of heart as to Christ. Not with what? Uh, eye eye service. service. As men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. So not with eye service, right? Not going, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 all right. Oh, yeah, okay. uh oh, they're looking. I better do something. Okay, they're not looking. Ah, who cares? Okay, I'm behind closed doors now. Nobody can see what I'm doing. Oh, really? He does. You know what? That's somebody that's not seeing things through. Because they don't realize the eyes of the Lord are upon them. They're not seeing things. You know what? They have no fear of God. Even though outwardly they can come out of the closet, oh man, praise God, man, this, that, whatever, you know what? They're full of baloney, and Jesus knows it. But when they get before you, they've got all of this stuff, but behind closed doors, there's no fear of God because they're not seeing it through. Second Peter, last verse. Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter. Chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Would you read this with me? For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but were what? Eyewitnesses of His majesty. We want to be eyewitnesses, brothers and sisters. For He received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to Him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son and whom I am well pleased. And that's what we want to hear. Amen. This is my beloved child whom I am well pleased who is willing to see things through and not get caught up with the things of the world in self. Listen, let's start practicing seeing things through. You'll find out that you won't hurt other people and you won't hurt you. You'll be more victorious and you won't bring shame in the name of the Lord, and you won't be a fool. And people won't think that you're a granola saying, God has told you to do all these things when you're not seeing it through and it's not coming to pass. And it's not working right. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We plead the blood of Jesus on this seat. Lord, help us to see things through. We repent for all the times that we didn't see things through and brought shame to you, a stumbling block to a brother or sister and to ourself. Now, Father, we commit these things to you. We ask for your forgiveness, for your mercies and for your grace and that you reestablish us with insight that we may see things through in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>